co-panelists are Colonel Comfort Ankomadansu and John Osei Tutu Ajimang. This is a momentous occasion. I'd like to tell you that on Ghana Television, when the president-elect Donado Danko Ekufuado is leaving home, Ghana Television is going to be traveling live with him, so literally every step of the way. Um, JOT and Comfort, of course, we've all seen um, these sort of ceremonies before. We're told there'll be a guard of honor, a state sword. Today, the guard of honor is formed by the 5th Infantry Battalion and the 48th Regiment of the Ghana Army, or not. Actually, um, thank you. The guard of honor, which will be put in place at the tail end of the function, will be inspected by the then newly elected president of the Republic of Ghana, and who will also be the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Ekufo Ado. He will inspect the guards which will comprise three officers and 96 all ranks. So at the tail end of it, I'll come back and explain everything to you. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to have a military expert on the panel. JOT, let's talk about the state sword for a minute, because there's lots of things that we're going to be seeing. The state sword is the symbol of the authority of the President of the Rep Republic of Ghana. It usually arrives under police guard. Can you tell us a little bit about what it looks like and what it symbolizes? What is it actually called? Okay, for most people, the state sword is the most valuable thing that would appear here today because um, it's a, a double-bladed sword. Uh, in, uh, in, in the local language, we say akofnanta, which is two, two, two swords held in taking uh, the presidential oath of office. It was commissioned by Ghana's first president, uh, Osajifo Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, by the famed artist Kofi Atubam, who also, incidentally, designed the presidential chairs that they'll be sitting on. So it's revered. You don't see the state sword every day. You see it once in four years, and that is it. It is always under lock and key because it's solid gold solid gold. We started talking about Edinkra symbols and how important it is. The Edinkra symbol on the state sword is Nyamitumi, which means God power. It's also Fawohu, which is freedom, and being kebi, justice, and Adishi, royalty and sovereignty. At the top of the state sword is a five-point star, which tells us about the unity of Ghana, and that's been something that's been very important in a difficult election Absolutely. year to talk about that. So this is one of the many symbols that you're going to be seeing today. We can also, I suppose, give you a little bit of conversation about the seat of state. Colonel, can you, can you walk us through what we shall be seeing? Yeah, the seat of state is equally made of symbols taken from the traditional Ghanaian stool symbolism. The crescent, or the Osramfa, which forms the actual seat, symbolizes the influence of feminine disposition and nature of the well-being of the society and state. The egg, or oval shape, Akutsuyasi, which forms the back press symbolizes perfection in all its beauty in the existence of society. Of course, there is a number of Edinkra symbols we're going to see here. JOT, for instance, the rainbow. Tell us a little bit about that. Look, all of these are part of the uh, state uh, seat that the president sits on. and. Um, He's not the only one who sits on the stage, so you have the, the seat for the vice president and also the others as well. But you have the Abrobe, uh, the Bakres, uh, Dadibne, and all of that. So several Adinkra symbols put together make the state uh, so, uh, a seat. And of course, the state of Ghana is supreme over everything, every individual, every ethnic group, and it's emphasized by the black star of Ghana, Ghana Shroma. And, so um, these are some of the things I that think are what's happening. happening the excitement. And now live, we are seeing some of the guests who are coming in. Um, we're standing up. We're literally being drowned out live on Ghana television is, yeah. by the crowd. It is amazing. JLT, take us away. Well, it's because several people are coming in and on the screen we see some of the uh, uh, dignitaries coming in. Sir John, 
uh, receiving cheers from the crowd. Oh, Earlier on, we saw Ejaku as well Sergio. coming in as well. But the dignitaries are and, coming in. And, and you know, uh, let's talk a little bit about the excitement, the, the euphoria, the, 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 the ecstasy that is going on at the moment. Thank you, JOT. Actually, it was Sir John who was uh, picking all the fans. From He's doing fans. more than picking the fans, Colonel. He's drowning us out, actually. Um, so we will update you when we um, have a live shot. And actually, as I said, GTV is going to be coming live from the president's house, president elect's house. Um, we'll be riding with him, and we will take you every step along the way. Some of the things that you should know in the background: we have a number of diplomats who are walking in. Others are already seated. I believe what you see in front of you is the former, uh, the wife of the former president of Nigeria. In front of you in your shot was Hajia Ramatu Aliu Mahama, the wife of the late vice president of the Republic of Ghana, Alaji Aliu Mahama. Oh, well, there you go, Nanaya Furiasha. Um, I have been duly corrected. I'm going to stick to what I know. And what I know is um, in front of you, well, live in front, uh, live on your screens, apart from a very jubilant crowd, number of military people, number of dignitaries also taking their seats. There are a number of precedents and um, there are appointees. Sir John uh, continues to excite the crowd. Just about the only thing he hasn't provided us with is a Usain Bolt. But you should know, of course, that there are 275 members of parliament. The new patriotic party has 169 seats. And the National Democratic Congress, which is now in the minority, holds the balance of 104 seats. In the previous parliament, the National Democratic Congress held a majority with 148 seats and the MPP held 122 seats. So we're about to also see a total of about 35 female MPs in the 2017 parliament, six more than there were in the 2012 parliament. JOT, do you think that's really going to make a difference? Because you have an overwhelming majority anyway of the ruling party. Does it matter whether you have more female MPs or not. And I must warn you that I asked this question with intent. Well, to be honest with you, I, I think we should have more female MPs in Parliament. Um, in the past, there's been a lot of talk about affirmative action and quotas and so on and so forth. But 35 is woefully inadequate for women in Parliament. Considering, considering some of the top positions in this country are held by women. Uh, you're talking about the Chief Justice who herself will be swearing in the, the President-elect today. And then you have the EC boss. Who is also yes, we haven't seen very much of Madame Charlotte also, uh, Of course, uh, if we pick her out, we'll Charlotte be Osei. happy to point you towards her. But we haven't seen her as yet. I'm sure she will find her way here at some point. But Colonel, um, a little bit more about the current Speaker of Parliament, Professor Mike Okwe. He's an academic, he's a lawyer, of course, a former Member of Parliament himself, a former Minister of Energy, formerly Minister of Communication, former Ambassador and author. He's a Minister of the Baptist Church. I mean, and this is a man who has been literally through the mill. What do you think that his tenure as presidency is going to bring? Well, actually, that's Dasibre, uh, Dasibre Osei Bonsu, Mamponhine. That's, uh, that's we will keep Osei switching Bonsu. back and forth from the commentary and as well as giving you an update as we see people coming in live. Actually, Professor Mike Okwe has is a veteran politician he's had two t arriving on your shots is the chief of air staff nagai. air vice marshal nagai and the top brass of the security personnel okay we've missed um that was um before that, we saw the Chief of Air Staff. Uh, 
We are seeing some of the service staff yeah. come in. I think um, we saw the top brass yeah. of prisons. Yeah, the chief and the chief of the army staff, Major General Obed Boama Aqua, and the chief of naval staff, and that is the chief of the defense staff, Air Marshal Samson Oje, who was on your shot a while ago. The top brass of the security personnel are all here. So we have the chief of the defense staff, the chief of the army staff, the chief of naval staff, the controller general of prisons, the commissioner customs division, director BNI, the chief fire officer, and director of immigration. Yes, there will be, as we said, a number of the chiefs of all of the security service will be represented um, here. We continue to see traditional um, drumming and dancing taking place, but there is going to be literally a feast for our eyes, isn't there, JOT? Absolutely, and um, I'm quite interested in the pomp and the pageantry because it shows the very best of Ghana and what we have to offer. And as the dignitaries come uh, to the Independence Square, uh, for example, you, you saw the top brass of the army in their beautiful, beautiful uniforms, uh, ceremonial uniforms as they come in. So some more dignitaries coming in, uh, we'll let you know who they are, us, uh, and when we go along. Indeed. Um, we also have a number of um, visiting precedents. Um, for instance, we're expecting to see a very elegant looking gentleman. I do not have his name, but my goodness, the pomp and pageantry, as you said. Um, the president of Mauritius will make his way at some point. We're expecting the vice president for executive affairs. Um, it's from Iran. We are expecting also a former Prime Minister and Assistant President from Egypt, the Deputy President for Kenya, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, the President of Kosovo. Of course, all of them are coming here to celebrate Ghana. And the most important thing are the Ghanaians who are here, who are watching, who are listening, and literally came in. We got here at about 6 o'clock in the morning. And Colonel, you can talk us through what that was like. Indeed, by 3 o'clock, 3.30 this morning, the whole wings, both ends of the wings of the Flat Star, Black Star Square was full. And by 6.30, 7 o'clock, the whole area was full up. And we are waiting for the members of parliament, the judiciary, the just the outgoing president and the president-elect to arrive very soon. JT, um, we, everybody scores all eyes on the president and then um, president-elect because he hasn't been sworn in yet, we must remember that. Um, you can see on your screens a number of dignitaries who are making their way, hopefully, fortunately, soon to this seat. But just a little bit about the profile of um, President-elect Nanada Dankwe Kufuado. So he's been in politics for about, well, just about 40 years, the best part of his life, you would say. He was born March 29th, 1944, in Swalaba, in Accra. He was raised in Gamami, and he likes to call it that. That's Nima, if you must know. Uh, that's his father's residence, where he will be leaving from shortly. Ghana Television cameras will be riding along with him. Um, he spent a lot of time in Kolewokong, in Betty House, which essentially became the de facto headquarters of the country's first political party, the United Gold Convention, uh, United Gold Coast Convention. Um, he comes from a long line of politicians. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you look on the Ghana CD, six of the big 
three of the big six are his relatives. J.B. Dankwa is his grand uncle, William of Ferreira is his uncle, and Edward of Kufuado, of course, is his father. His father um, was presidential, um, well, he was ceremonial president from 1969 to 72, but before that he was chief justice of Ghana. Jyoti, a little bit more about his political career, if you would. Well, Nanado was elected three times as member of parliament for the Ibuakwa South If I may, I believe that is uh, Liko Dangote, who has just arrived. We have a huge delegation coming in from Nigeria. So, Dangote. And Dangote is us. Africa's richest man. And uh, for him to be in Ghana for this, uh, well, he is speaks in Ghana. a lot. He has a lot of cement here. Absolutely. So it's good for him to come and But it's good for us here. because uh, it, shows, it shows the, the business uh, between Ghana and Nigeria as well. So, um, a lot of the dignity is still coming in, but uh, well, let's, let's continue. I believe that's the ambassador to Egypt, and therefore that would be the delegation of from Egypt. Egypt. So that's the former, former Prime Minister of Egypt um, who's just come in. So Nanado was, um, as I said before, uh, elected three times as Member of Parliament for the Buakwa South constituency in the Eastern Region, 1996, 2000, and 2004. Uh, between 2001 and 2007, he served um, Ghana with distinction as cabinet minister. He was a cabinet minister uh, in uh, President Kufour's government. He was attorney general and minister for justice. And then he became foreign minister, uh, a position he held for five years. And it will interest you to note that Nanadu was very, very instrumental in uh, bringing some sanity into countries like Liberia, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, Guinea-Bissau during the trying times of these countries when he served as foreign minister. So he's well respected uh, uh, on the continent. Um, he has chaired uh, ECOWAS meetings severally in, uh, in place of um, President Kufour and uh, was once president of the uh, United Nations Security Council as well. So well, that's, uh, um, Yes, indeed, that is a revolving chairship absolutely, and absolutely. at the point when Ghana's term was um, was due, he was. He was, indeed. yes. Um, so he's been foreign minister, member of parliament, lawyer, civil rights activist, sportsman as well. Many people don't know that about him, but he's a, he's a diehard well. sports uh, person. So. Indeed. And of course, um, December 7th, he managed to deliver for the third time.